<laughs> Carmen, I'd like to come back to you. Um, there, there's been talk, and following up on our previous conversation, there's been talk about the Jones Act uh, recently, and, and I've, I've seen some folks that have expressed concern about the, about the Jones Act from a fiscal perspective, which certainly uh, concerns uh, me as well, anything that, that would be um, perceived or in reality, of course, as being a, a waste of taxpayer funds. If, if you, you know, going back to what we talked about earlier, if we repealed the Jones Act, we made significant changes. Um, the potential game changer from a security situation and, and many others referring back to your previous comments. Um, do you view, you know, if you were to monetize the Jones Act, the, 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 the um, capability it provides to the defense industrial base, um, the security uh, stability that it provides, do you view that as a, as a money loser for taxpayers? I can only conjecture on that. You know, my biggest focus is, is what is what does it do to our resiliency as a maritime nation? Um, and quite honestly, it will nearly bankrupt our maritime resiliency. When we look at the challenges that the Marriott administrator is facing, that the commander of Transcom is facing in the event of a contingency, and we don't have a lift within the U.S. fleet to respond to a contingency at a point in time we're seeing a reemergence of peer competitors. Yeah, it's in our nation's best interest, um, and I think from a sovereign interest, not necessarily from a taxpayer, that, that we protect our maritime resiliency, and the Jones Act does provide that wherewithal. Thank you. Uh, another question. Hey, Congressman, um, if I might interject yeah, on, on, on this particular topic. Um, if the build requirement uh, were changed, uh, there's about 40 different yards across the country uh, that are building both federal programs and also commercial. Uh, today, under construction, there are 32 uh, large vessels under construction, and uh, of those, uh, 12 are uh, what I would refer to as normal self-propelled tankers. There's also 20 articulated tug and barges uh, with large vessels in terms of the capability to carry 150 to 200,000 uh, barrels. We also have four uh, what I call special purpose ships, or their conros, or their ability to bury containers and roll on, roll off, and also just regular uh, LNG ready type container ships. Uh, without the Jones Act, that, those builds don't occur, uh, which means that the federal government now has to assume all of the costs of the overhead for that industrial base, which means that your cost for those vessels is going to go up. Uh, the industry itself, and that includes both the federal shipbuilding and the commercial shipbuilding, uh, we just released a study uh, last fall uh, that updated some numbers we did from 2013. That's 110,000 people around the country that are building ships. That's a $36 billion industry. Without that commercial shipbuilding and that industrial base, it, it will have an impact on the taxpayer in terms of what we have to pay to acquire the ships, whether they're for the Navy, the Coast Guard, for NOAA, uh, for the Army Corps. Uh, Administrator, could you provide a copy of that report for the record? Yes, sir, I can. Thank you. Um, so, again, I, I want to make note, you know, any program that's going to waste taxpayer funds would obviously cause great concern. Um, and, and I think if you, if you look at only the, the surface, in some cases it may cause concern. But it sounds like, based on what you're saying and some of the Admiral's uh, comments, that when you actually dig deeper, that this does provide value to taxpayers in regard to the resiliency of our, uh, of our defense industrial base and the security of the country.